Hello friends, this video on sexual reproduction in flowering plants part 9 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now let us look at the steps in detail of the monospore development. So first of all what will happen, the nucleus undergo mitotic division. So the nucleus will undergo mitotic division. So a two nucleate embryo sac will be formed. Now which nucleus am I talking about? I am talking about the basal megaspore now. So because only one megaspore is functional. So forget about the other three megaspores. They are already degenerated. So this one megaspore has got a nucleus because it is like a normal cell with a nucleus. So the nucleus of this megaspore will undergo mitotic division. So what will happen? Two nuclei will be formed. So whenever mitosis takes place from one you get two. So two nucleate embryo sac will be formed. Fine. Again it will undergo mitotic division. So now initially you had one nucleus. After mitotic division two were formed. Now these nuclei again undergo mitotic division. So what will happen? This will form two. This will also form two. So total four nucleate embryo sac is formed. So that embryo sac now has four nuclei. Now what happens is each of them again undergo mitotic division. So here you can actually see this is how it starts. At first it is a two nucleate embryo sac. Then it is a four nucleate embryo sac. And finally it is an eight nucleate embryo sac. So you see here one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, seven, eight. So you just started with a single nucleus of the megaspore and you ended up with an 8 nucleate embryo sac. So this 8 nucleate embryo sac is the final thing that is formed. Now these 8 nuclei which are present inside, we have to understand them. They are also arranged in a specific pattern and they play a very important role in the process of fertilization. So we have to understand how these eight nuclei are organized inside the embryo sac. So basically we are now going to understand this structure in more detail. We just want to see how these eight nuclei inside the embryo sac is organized. Now once the eight nucleate state is received. I mean, when once you reach the eight nucleate stage, then cell wall formation takes place. So cell wall is formed. Now until and unless cell wall is formed, what will happen? The nuclei can keep on dividing. But as soon as cell wall is formed, what happens? It, it reaches the cellular stage. So the cell wall formation does not take place before the formation of eight nuclei. Only after the eight nucleate stage is reached, cell wall formation takes place. So the embryo sac is formed. So only then we say that the embryo sac is formed. Because until and unless the cell wall is formed, the division will keep on happening. So from 2 to 4, 4 to 8, 8 to 16 and so on. It will keep on increasing. Right? So now the cell wall formation has happened. That means now it is a 8 nucleate embryo sac. And that is the how, that is how the embryo sac is formed. And this process is known as monosporic development because this 8 nucleate embryo sac was formed from a single megaspore. So now let us try to look at the internal structure of the embryo sac, how those 8 nuclei are organized inside. Now they are organized in this fashion. So we have an, have an arrangement called egg apparatus. We have another arrangement of three nuclei called antipodals and we have a central cell. So now you might be wondering what are these three arrangements now. So just look, have a look at this. So this is the embryo sac which we saw in the previous slide. But what is the difference here? In the previous slide we saw that there were just eight nuclei which were formed inside it. But now you see the eight nuclei has been organized in different ways. Two nuclei are present in the central region and these two nuclei which are present in the central region, they form the central cell. Three nuclei towards one end and what are these three nuclei towards one end? They form the antipodals and again three nuclei towards the other end and these three nuclei together form 
the egg apparatus. Now here, which end is which one? So this end is the micropylar end and this end is the chalazal end. So I am just telling this in order that you know which side is the egg apparatus. So the egg apparatus is towards the micropylar end and the antipodals are towards the chalazal end. Now what is egg apparatus? It is made up of three cells. So this is the egg apparatus. It is made up of three cells. What are those three cells? One egg cell and two synergids. So you can see these two. The central one is the egg cell. So the central one is the egg cell and the two on the two sides of the egg cells are the synergids. Now what are synergids? These are sterile cells which are located on either side of the egg cell. Now these synergids do not play a direct role in the process of fertilization. They degenerate after pollination has taken place. However, they have a special thickening at the micropylar tip. So if you look at these two cells, the synergids, towards the micropylar end, they have some special thickenings. And how does this thickening help? This thickening helps the pollen tube to enter into the synergid. Now there will be a pollen tube which will carry the pollen grains and the pollen tube will enter through these thickenings of the synergid. So in a way the synergid helps the pollen tube to get into it. And that is how the male gametes are able to reach the female gamete. And which is the female gamete? Egg cell is a female gamete. So this egg apparatus is located towards the micropylar end. As I mentioned, this end is the micropylar end. Next set of cells are the antipodals. They are three cells which are located at the basal end of the ovule. So basal end is the chalazal end. So this is the basal end and we have three cells. So these three cells also degenerate. So they also do not play a direct role in the process of fertilization. And what about the central cell? It has two polar nuclei. So here you can see the two polar nuclei. So these two polar nuclei also act as the female gamete and they also participate in the process of fertilization. So when the process of fusion takes place, so one may, there will be two male gametes coming in through the pollen tube. So one male gamete will fuse with the egg cell. The other male gamete will fuse with, the, with these two polar nuclei. And that is why in angiosperms, the process of fusion is called double fertilization because two fusions take place. One between the egg cell and male gamete, the other between the polar nuclei and the male gamete. So other than these two polar nuclei and the egg cell, rest all of the five cells, they all degenerate. That is the antipodals and the synergids, they all degenerate. So this is about the internal structure of the embryo sac. So I hope you are able to understand. So now based on whatever we have studied, let us look at. So this is the initial structure when the embryo sac is in the process of formation. This is how, so this is how it looks like. Now how does it look on maturity? So this is how a matured embryo sac look like. So in the matured embryo sac, you have three cells towards the chalazal end. This is the chalazal end and this is the micropylar end. So these three cells are the antipodals. As I mentioned before, they degenerate after pollination is done. The, in the central region, you have the polar nuclei. So they directly participate in the process of fertilization. Towards the micropylar end, you have two synergids. These two are the synergids. And in between the synergids, you have an egg cell. So the one which is hidden in between, that is the egg cell. And we also saw that uh, there is some thickening of the synergids towards the micropylar end. So this is that thickening. And this thickening is known as filiform apparatus. So remember this name. Because it is this filiform apparatus which helps the pollen tube to enter inside the synergid. So... The overall result is that a mature embryo sac is 7 celled but 8 nucleate. So how many total nuclei are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So it is 8 nucleate, that is clear, but it is 7 celled. Why is it 7 celled? Because the two polar nuclei, they join together to form a single cell. 
So that is why the two polar nuclei together form one cell. So that means we have three cells here, three cells here. So six plus one, seven. So it is seven celled but eight nucleate because eight nuclei are present. Thank you. Please visit www.examclear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.